Hallmark Cards. When you care enough to send the very best. Presents Alfred Drake and Patricia Morrison in Kiss Me Kate by Sam and Bella Spiewak. Music and lyrics by Cole Porter. Also starring Julie Wilson, Bill Hayes, Harvey Lembeck, and Jack Klugman with Paul McGrath. Executive producer, Mildred Fried Alberg. Produced and directed by George Schaefer on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Presented by the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. shake off Gramio and Hortensio on that entrance in the street scene? Oh, yes, Mr. Graham. Right, Bianca? Yes, Fred. I mean, Mr. Graham. Lois, why not try a downstage turn on that scene with Lucencio? Do you mean that or that? We'll thus it later. <laughs> Good girl. Now, Bill Calhoun. Calhoun. Oh, Bill Calhoun! Bill Calhoun! If a Broadway Bill hooker Calhoun! attempts to play Shakespeare, what happens? He isn't even here. I think he went to the Chiropodist. We have an opening tonight. All right, we'll rehearse the calls without him. All principals, line up for curtain calls. Come on, come on. Miss Vanessa, you care to join us? Thank you. Leave space for me. First call. Pat, please, change places with Gramio. Right. Second call, Bianca and Suitors. Thank you. That looks all right. Third call, myself and Miss Vanessa. Uh, excuse me. Lois. Didst thou call me, honey? Just one more note. I want you to rest and relax and let your mind go blank. Blank. How blank can it get? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting, Miss Vanessa. All right, watch it, Ralph. Call it. Third call. No. No, I think it'd look better if we came downstairs together and then bowed to each other. Right? Oh, now, how about a little smile, Miss Vanessa? Ready? You louse! <laughs> all right, that's all till curtain, kids. Bill Calhoun there. This is Lois Lane. I said Lois Lane. Well, you don't have to be so fresh about it. Bill. Hiya, Sarah Bernhardt. Bill, I told Mr. Graham you went to the chiropodist. I went to the cleaners. Have you been gambling again? How much did you lose this time? Five G's, 5,000 fast little bucks. <laughs> Did you sign an I.O.U. again? Well, I wouldn't be alive in here if I hadn't. Besides, I didn't want to miss rehearsal. Whose name did you sign this time? Frederick Graham, your hero. Mr. Graham, Bill, this is our big chance. Do you want to play nightclubs all your life? Oh, 
Bill, why can't you behave? Oh, why can't you behave? After all the things you told me and the promises that you gave, oh, why? So your baby can be your slave. Oh, why can't you behave? There's a farm I know near my old hometown where we two can go and try. is Graham, Fred Graham. Total is five grand. Collect tonight. Yes, Mr. Hogan. When a man signs an IOU in my establishment, he pays. Otherwise, you create a bad precedent. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Hogan. Calling me a louse and on stage. I just indicated it. Mm. I'm over. Thanks, Ralph. Oh, this heat. Well, you know Baltimore. Mm. Half hour. How's the house? Well, you know Baltimore. Mm, I know. There'll be deer running around the balcony. Next time I open a show here, I'll bring my shotgun and eat. <laughs> ha! So much for your Hollywood name. Your fans must have heard you were appearing in person. Well, go on, pick it up. It's probably Harrison. Hello? Oh, Harrison, darling, I thought you'd be here by now. You're still at the White House. What? The President? He wants to speak to me, to unimportant little me. But what'll I say? Oh, good evening, Mr. President. I Is can't... it true, Mr. President, you're serving borscht at the White House? Oh, dear you, Mr. President, I apologize. I beg your pardon? With sour cream a la Khrushchev. What'd I tell you? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, hello, Harrison, darling. Uh, I do wish you'd come tonight, Angel. After all, it's your show, Angel. <laughs> mm, yes, darling. I understand. I'm blowing you two kisses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see it. I see it. What is it, the Hope Diamond? Oh, did, did I show you the star sapphire Harrison sent me? It was his mother's engagement ring. His mother must have worn it on her big toe. And now it's mine. Congratulations. Do you know what day this is, Fred? Our anniversary, and you forgot. What anniversary? The first anniversary of our divorce. If you must know, I was thinking of sending you a cactus. But no money. I know you're rolling in it. Every night before I go to bed, that's exactly what I do. Roll in my money. Wonderful for the hips. Uh, Hollywood. Swimming pools, avocado ranches. <laughs> well, I, 
I put every penny I could scrape, borrow, or steal into my Cyrano in Paris. But I was a huge success. And you closed on Saturday four glorious performances. I'll have you know there was a general strike. Oh, you couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> Same old Lily. Who is this little monster, Harrison Howell? That's you, at the age of two, bottoms up. Oh, he's a cute little fella. Do you mind if I keep it? No. And you can have this, too. Is that a cork? Our first bottle of champagne. Our wedding breakfast? In my apartment. You mean that one room of yours over the Armenian bakery? You're a fine one to complain. You didn't even have a room. Why do you think I married you? That was the season we played the Barter Theater in Virginia, and they paid you with a hand. Well, we lived on that all winter, you forget. You forget. I got a job reading tea leaves in that gypsy tea shop opposite Macy's. And you forget I demonstrated shaving soap at Woolworths. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's how I spent my honeymoon. At Woolworths, watching you shave. It was right after we closed on the road in that little British makeshift of a Viennese operetta that for some reason was laid in Switzerland. But the costumes were Dutch. Mm, and so were the salaries. There was a waltz in it, remember? Something about a bar. Yeah, madame, you are ravishing tonight. You have made me the happiest of men. You're mm. Wunderbar! Wunderbar. What a bright shining star Like a love, it's wonderful Gazing down on the Jungfrau From a secret chalet Let us drink Liebchen mine In the moonlight be mine To the joy of a dream What a perfect night for love. Here am I, here you are. Why, it's truly wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. We're alone and hand in glove. Not a cloud near or far. Why, it's more than wonderful. Say you care, dear. For you madly. Say you love. For your kiss. Do you swim Darling, gladly. Life's divine. And your mind, dear. Wunderbar, wunderbar. There's our favorite star above. What a bright, shining Temper. Could have been your ego. Mm -hmm. Let's get dressed. Hello. Who are you? What are you doing backstage? Hey, fine looking fella. What a profile. 
Well, gentlemen, I'm, I'm deeply touched by your admiration and devotion. Ma Dixon! Very elocutionary. Uh, he does not spit when he talks. Yes, this is all very flattering, but I received the public after the performance, not before. Hey, what grace! If I had to do something to him, I'd cry like a baby. Gentlemen, come back after the show. I'll be very happy to present you with my autograph. We got your autograph. That's why we're here. What? A little matter of an IOU. 5G. Here it is. Now, Mr. Hogan, uh, that's our employer. He regards this as a debt of honor. So how's about it, Mr. Graham? You're mad. Paul. Paul! Let me see that. Why, that's not even my signature. Hmm? They all say that. I'm surprised at you, Mr. Graham. Signed it only this afternoon, after quite a little game. I have been in this theater since 8 o'clock this morning. I'd cry like a baby if I had to do something to such a high-type fella. Last week, you remember that high-type fella? I used up three handkerchiefs. Would you gentlemen mind leaving? Hey, ain't he virile? Mr. Graham, try to jostle your memory. The minute a guy signs an IOU, suddenly everything goes dark. That's human nature for you. We'll be back. Oh, hello, Paul. Hi, beautiful. For Miss Lily. Uh, From Mr. Fred. Uh, 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 uh. Flowers for you, Miss Lily. Oh, <laughs> no drops. And pansies and rosemary. My wedding bouquet. Oh, happy he didn't forget. Well, of course not, honey. I'll get you some coffee. you mean letting a couple of raving maniacs in here five minutes before curtain? There was no one in here when I left. Well, of course, they, they may just have been overwhelmed at meeting me. Well, I'm sure of it, sir. You know, everybody feels the magnetism of your personality, sir, off stage and on. You know, Paul, you're not only the finest dresser I've ever had, but a true connoisseur of the theater. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Did you deliver my flowers? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You put the card in with them? Yes, sir. Good. You gave them to Miss Lane personally, of course. Miss Lane? I thought they were for Miss Vanessa, sir. Miss Vanessa? You driveling nitwit! I'm sorry, sir. I ain't been myself since Blue Blood was scratched in the third race. Fred, darling! 
darling, you didn't forget. You didn't think I would. Don't get you started. Come on, let's go. My hands are freezing. Oh, Lily, I got loose. I think they like me. I've been going. Darling, they love you. Now, come on. Lily, the car, they come with the flowers. You're not going to read that now. Look, I'll tell you what I wrote. To Lily, the only woman I've ever loved, the only artist I've ever worshipped. Now, give me the card, and you can read it after the show. Darling, do you really mean that? With all my heart. Then that's what it's going right next to mine. I'm not nervous. I'm not going to whoops. And I'll never call you a louse again, Fred, dear. Never. You will, my sweet. You will. on them to look and practice by myself. Ah, uh, poor child. Uh, Signor Baptista. Signor Baptista. Gentlemen, Sorry, gentlemen, friend. importune me no further for how firmly I am resolved you know. That is, not to be stole by youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. Now, if either of you love Catherine, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. Oh, to court her rather. She's too rough for me. If only I could find a man who would thoroughly woo her and wed her and bed her and rid my house of her. Oh, me. I've made a hole in all the leading rackets, from which rip roaring rich I happen to be. And if thou wouldst detain the upper brackets, marry me, marry me, marry me. My purse has yet to know a silver lining. Still lifeless is my wifeless family tree. But if for love an ending thou art pining, marry me, marry me, marry me. 
I come to the a thoroughbred patrician, still spraying my decaying family tree. To give a social lift to thy position, marry me, marry me, marry me. I'm a maid, not to marry, and would take double quick any time, Dick or Harry, any time, Harry or Dick. I'm the man thou shouldst marry. Howdy, Tom. Howdy, Mom. I'm the man thou shouldst marry. Art thou Harry, Dick or Tom? I'm the man thou shouldst marry. Howdy, pal. Howdy, chick. Art thou Tom, Dick or Harry? Call me Tom, Harry or Dick. She's I'm a, a maid. maid. Would marry and would no longer tarry. I'm a maid who would marry, may her hopes not miscarry. I'm a maid mad to marry and would take double quick any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Sweet Bianca, she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. She looks as clean as morning roses, newly washed with dew. I burn, I pine, I perish. Sweet Bianca. Are you a suitor to the maid you talk of? And if I be, sir, is it any offense? No, if without more words, you get me hence. Why, sir, not the streets are free for him as for you. Petruchio! Lucentio! What happy gale goes you to Padua here from old Verona? Such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes. And you? I came to study. Hmm. I am glad that you thus combine your resolve to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy, the mathematics, and uh, the botany. Fall to them as your stomach serves. No profit grows where is no pleasure taken. In brief, sir, study. As for me, I've come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. If my wife has a bag of gold, do I care if the bag be old? I've come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. He's come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. I heard you mutter, sounds a loathsome land you are. I shall not be disturbed one bit, if she be but a quarter wit. If she only can talk of clothes, while she powders her doggone nose. I've come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. He's come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. I heard you say, Gatsook's completely mad you are. Twouldn't give me the slightest shock if her knees now and then should knock. If her eyes were a wee bit crossed, was she wearing the hair she'd lost? Still the damsel I'll make my dame. In the dark they are all the same. I've come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. He's come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. I heard you say, good God, but what a cad you are. Do I mind if she fret and fuss, if she fume like Vesuvius, if she roar like a winter breeze on the rough Adriatic seas, if she scream like a teething brat, if she scratch like a tiger cat, if she fight like a raging bull. I have often met a bull before. Come to wipe it wealthily in Padua. With the honey, 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 and the hey, hey, hey. 
not to mention money, money for a rainy day. I'm coming to wind it well, in Padua. Then, sir, will you woo a wildcat? Will I live? <laughs> Tell me her father's name, and it's enough. Catherine, Catherine, for shame. She is your treasure. She must have a husband. I must dance barefoot on her wedding day and pay your love to her lead apes and hell. Who oh, was ever father thus grieved as I? A word with you, kind sir. Oh, important me no further, good sir. But how firmly I am resolved, you know that it... Huh? Whisper louder. Oh, that is indeed news. Good news. Come in, Lucentio. Lucentio. Thou meacock wretch. What? A gentleman from Verona desires you in marriage. Then he best go back there. Help me, sir. Greetings, good sir. I hear, sir, you have a daughter called Catherine, fair and virtuous. I have a daughter, sir, called Catherine. I am a gentleman from Verona, sir, that hearing of her beauty and her wit, her affability and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior... <laughs> mild behavior. I'm bold to make myself a forward guest within your house to make mine eye the witness of that report. Oh, well, I... I Senor Baptista, my business asketh haste, and every day I cannot come to woo. Well, I fear my daughter Catherine is not for your turn. The more my grief. I see you do not mean to part with her. Oh, mistake me not. Or else you like not of my company. Oh, you are more than welcome to... Well, then, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? Well, well, well after my death, the one half of my lands. The fertile part. So be it. And uh, in possession? 20,000 crowns. 30. Oh, yeah. 30. Father. Let's spend.
specialties be drawn between us that covenants may be kept on either hand. Go, get thee to a notary. Aye, when the special thing is well obtained, this is her love, for that is all in all. That is nothing, father, for I tell you I am as peremptory as she is proud-minded. I will attend her here and woo her with some spirit when she comes. If she do bid me pack, I I'll give her- I bid thee pack, the only artist I've ever worshipped. Uh, grazie, signorina. And, uh, and now, Petruccio, uh, speak. Speak, Petruccio. Although thy message was not meant for me, you lie. Good morrow, Kate. We're on stage now, Lily. Good morrow, Kate. Hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtue spoke of and thy beauty sounded, yet not so deeply as to thee belongs. <coughs> Myself, I moved to woo thee for my wife. Moved in good time. Let him who moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first you were immovable. Why, what's immovable? A joint stool. Thou hast hit it. Come, sit on me. Asses are made to bear, and so are you. Women are made to bear, and so are you. No such state as you with me, you mean. Come, come, you waspy faith. You are too angry. If I be waspish, best beware my sting. My... My remedy is then to pluck it out. Aye, if the fool could find it where it lies. Oh, who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting in his tail. <laughs> I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. You keep on acting just the way you're doing, Miss Vanessa, and I'll give you the paddling of your life and right on stage. You wouldn't dare. No. no. Come. No. Come. No. Father, Come. No. Give me thy no. hands. <laughs> Setting all this chat aside, Thus, in plain terms, your father has consented you should be my wife, and will you nil you? I will marry you now, Kate. I am a husband for your turn. For by this light whereby I see thy beauty, thy beauty that doth make me like thee well, thou must be married to no man but me, for I am he and born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild state to a Kate conformable as other household Kate. You devil! Father! Father! Hang now, St. John Tuccio. How speed you with my daughter? How but well, sir, how but well? It were impossible I should speed amiss. We have agreed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. God give you joy, son. Tis a match. Amen, Amen. say we. Father and wife and gentlemen, adieu. I will unto Venice. I'm warning you to buy apparel against the wedding day. The Sunday comes apace. We shall have rings and things and fine array. And uh, kiss me, Kate. Oh. All right, Miss Vanessa. You asked for this, <laughs> and now you're going to get it. <laughs> On me, Mr. Frederick Graham. May I remind you, Miss Vanessa, the name of this piece is The Taming of the Shrew, not he who gets slapped. All right, now, come on, come on, kids. Let's what make that change. Get that little trap. There's no excuse for ad living, none. Let my lovely Lois shine through the anchor tonight, and there'll be a new star in the heavens, thou jerk. All right, all right. I sent the child some flowers. I sent her a card with the flowers. May I point out, Miss Vanessa, that I am free, male, and 35. 35? Ha! All right, 36. What's my age got to do with this? They were rich, full years, and I'm proud of them, every one of them. Show me another actor who's done all I've done. My peg into London. You never got to London. Yes, my Hamlet in Dublin. And you got paid in potatoes, mash. I could never teach you manners as a wife, but by heaven, I'll teach you manners as an actress. Not in this production, my pet. What did you say? You heard me. And here's something to remember me by. What are you trying to do, kill me? Ralph, Paul, Ralph. I'm bleeding. Yes, Mr. Graham. Give me some alcohol. My rib. I think she broke a rib. Ralph, how can you tell if you have a broken rib? X-ray. Why am I gonna get an X-ray? Well, all I've got is alcohol. Monstrous female, literally a vampire. Am I bleeding heavily, Ralph? I don't see any blood. What do you call that, Max Factor number two? Oh, I, I thought it was blood. Well, uh, the skin's bruised, though, isn't it? I don't see anything. It's, it's dis discolored. I don't see anything. That's all I need, a blind stage manager. Harrison, darling, I'll marry you tonight. You don't know what that villain's done to me. I can't sit down. I said I can't sit down. <laughs> I'm through with the theater. Send a car for me. Be better still send an ambulance. I want to go where no one will ever find me. I'll go to Washington. Yes, dear. Yes, love. Harry, pack my things. You don't think you can quit a show in the middle of a performance? Oh, no. Well, I'll have you up on charges at equity. Ha! I shall be glad, glad to appear before equity. I shall bring photographs of what you've done to me in technicolor. And I'll bring my 
Max race. Nothing you can say or do will stop me now. Harrison's coming for me. Hey, you don't think he'd let you quit? That idiot's got $200,000 in this show. You take it off his tax. You don't really mean you... Yes, I guess you do. You bet I do. You'll never work in the theater again! I want but to! But you're out of your mind! Get out! Get uh... out! Get out! Oh, for heaven's sake! Well, we just wanted to check with you, see if you jostled your memory. I told you, I never signed anything. Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I did sign that IOU. He remembers. What a relief. Now, when are you going to pay this debt of honor to one of America's most respectable floating crab games? As well as just said, I haven't got it. Oh, I would have it at the end of the week, of course, if the show could run. Oh, it'll run. It's entertaining, vivacious, and calculated to please the discriminating theater go. Yeah, you can quote it. Unfortunately, Miss Vanessi, my co-star, is quitting. Quitting? As of right now, temperament. Didn't like the way I played a little scene. Yes, she's, she's dressing to leave the theater. I'll, uh, I'll have to return whatever money there is in the box office. She can't do that. Perhaps if you had a little talk with her, heart to heart, that's our speciality. Lily. Oh, Lily. There's no use trying to persuade me to stay. Ah, some very ardent admirers of yours. Come in, gentlemen. Oh, how do you do? Do sit down. <laughs> Miss Vanessi, you've been my ideal for years. Really? Yeah, I married my wife because, in a certain light, when it's kind of dark, she might pass for your sister. How sweet. Your glorious voice has been an inspiration to me in my work. What a trooper. What a personality. Miss Vanessi, is it true that you're contemplating quitting this high-type entertainment? I am. Well, now, Miss Vanessi, we know that the show must go on. Well, I'm just transferring the weight off on one side onto the other. Now, Miss Vanessi, we got a financial interest in the success of the show, as well as a personal. And, Miss Vanessi, you got to play the show out tonight until the end of the week, so as Mr. Graham can pay his debt of honor. Are you threatening me? Oh, now, Miss Vanessi, let's talk this over. Fred? Fred? This is an outrage. marriage never was before. The man is mad. And so madly mate. And in such garb. A pair of boots that have been candle cases and not even mates. One buckled, another laced. Come, my bunny, Kate. I said come. Oh, Kate, content thee, prithee, be not angry. I will be angry. What hast thou to do? Forward to the bridal dinner. 
I see a woman may be made a fool of, but she has not the spirit to resist. Obey the bride, you that attend on her. Go to the feast. Revel and domineer. Be mad, be merry, or go hang yourselves. But for my body, Kate. But for my body, Kate, she must with me. Nay, look not big, nor stir, nor stamp, nor fret. I will be master of what is mine own. She is my goods, my chattels, my horse, my ox, my ass, my anything. Touch her, whoever dare. I'll bring mine action on the proudest he that stops my way and pad you, huh? So kiss me, Kate. Oh, lovely moon, Now thou shall ever be. Now thou shall ever be. Now thou shall ever be. Yes, mine. Yes, mine. Yes, mine. Yes, mine. Oh, kiss me, Kate. I'll crack your feet. Oh, please don't pout. I'll knock you out. Right priceless price. I'll crack you out. Oh, kiss me, quick. You're not out, please. Oh, kiss me. Oh, kiss me. Oh, kiss me. Oh, kiss me. Ladies and gentlemen, due to unavoidable circumstances, the scene which was to have opened the second half of the shrew will have to be omitted this evening. It is the scene on the mule where I, Petruccio, take my wife Catherine to Verona. We have a slight accident where my wife rolls off the mule into the mud and then proceeds to revile me. Miss Vanessi is unable to ride the mule this evening. We are therefore continuing with the next scene which takes place in Petruccio's house. Thank you. You loggerheaded knaves! What? No attendance, no regard, no duty? Go, rascals, go fetch my supper in! Kind strangers, you angels in disguise who did help me in my hour of need, and where well you rested from your travels in yon chamber. Get ye hence. Go to. Go to. Come to. Food, food, food. Where are those? Uh, sit down, Kate. Thou knowest full well that I cannot. Come, Kate. Sit down. I know you have a stomach. Will you give thanks, sweet Kate, or else shall I? What's this? Mutton? It is burnt, and so is all the meat. Take it with you. Oh. Be not so disquiet. The meat was well if you were so contented. I tell thee, Kate, was burnt and dried away. And I expressly am forbid to touch it, for it engenders color, planteth anger. And better twere that both of us did fast, since of ourselves ourselves are choleric, than feed it with such over-roasted flesh. Did you marry me to furnish me? Come, Kate. Hmm. Come, Kate. I will bring thee to thy bridal chamber. <laughs> How canst thou think of food at such a time? 
Thus have I politically begun my reign. And it is my hope to end it successfully. She ate no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not. As with the meat, some undeserved fault I'll find about the making of the bed. And here I'll fling the pillow, there the bolster, this way the coverlet, another way the sheets. I, and amid this hurly, I intend that all is done in reverent care of her. This is a way to kill a wife with kindness. And thus I'll curb her mad and headstrong humor. He that knows better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak. <laughs> Tis charity to show. Kate. My money, Kate? My winsome Kate. If faith, the woman shot her bolt. She has performed while I did act the dote. Since I reached the charming age of puberty and began to think of feminine curls, like a show that's typically shuberty, I have always had a multitude of girls. But now that a married man at last am I, how aware of my dear departed past am I? Where is the life that late I led? Where is it now? Totally dead. Where is the fun I used to find? Where has it gone? Gone with the wine. A married life may all be well, but raising an heir could never compare with raising a bit of hell. So I repeat what first I said. Where is the life that In dear Milano, where are you, Momo? Still selling those pictures of the scriptures in the Duomo. And Carolina, where are you, Lina? Still peddling your pizza in the streets of Taormina. And in Firenze, where are you, Alice? Still there in your pretty, itty, bitty, pretty palace. And sweet Lucretia, so young and gay. What scandalous doings in the ruins of Pompeii. Where is the life that late I left? Where is it now? Totally dead. Where is the fun I used to find? Where has it gone? Gone with the wine. The marriage game is quite all right. Yes, during the day it's easy to play, but over the four it's night. Nice. So I repeat what first I said. Where is the life that late I? Where is Rebecca? My Becky Wecky O. Could still she be cruising that amusing Ponte Vecchio? Where is Fedora, the wild Virago? It's lucky I missed her gangster sister from Chicago. Where is Venetia, who loved to chat so? Could still she be drinking in her stinking pink palazzo? And lovely Lisa, where are you, Lisa? You gave a new meaning to the leaning tower of Pisa. Where is the life that late I led? Where is it now? Totally dead. Where is the fun I used to find? Where has it gone? Gone with the wine. I've oft been told of nuptial bliss, but what do you do? A quarter to two with only a shrew to kiss. So I repeat what first I said. Where is the life that
space are open. What kind of a station manager do you call yourself? There's an ambulance out there for Miss Vanessi and a gentleman by the name of Harrison Howell. He's called a doctor and a nurse. Uh, uh, where is she? Quiet. There's a play going on. Hey, ain't you got no respect for the finer things alive? Man cannot live by bread alone. You, you Mr. Gray. Well, where is she? She's in her dressing room. Why, how now, Kate? Art thou mad? This is a man old, wrinkled, faded, and withered. <laughs> Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Harold! Harold! Where Roy? Harold! Uh, uh, all right, uh, uh, doctor, nurses, uh, just uh, wait outside. Harold! My name is not Harold. I am Harrison Howell. Why, Harold, don't you remember? In front of the Harvard Club. I had something in my eye, and you took me to Atlantic City to take it out. Well, now, look here, my child. Why, Harold, I still got that diamond bracelet with the rubies in it. I think of you all the time when I go down to my safe deposit box. Very touching, very touching, but, but but you must understand. Oh, I understand. I uh, rely on your discretion. I'm marrying Miss Vanessa, you know. Oh, I understand. Well, after all, I, I was just sowing my wild oats. Well, let me see, I was uh, really quite a young man at the time. Barely 45. And now you're a big man in Washington. Well, will you excuse me? Uh, Miss Vanessa is expecting me, you know. <laughs> when did you initiate him? What a thing to say, and about a man I haven't seen in years. I assure you, there was nothing wrong between he and I. Just because a girl is good-hearted and normal. Oh, Bill, why can't you behave? Oh, why can't you When you know, baby, I'm your slave. I'm just mad for you, and I'll always be. But naturally, if a custom tailor vet asks me out for something wet, when the vet begins to pet, I cry. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. I enjoy a tender pass by the boss of Boston Mass. Those who pass is middle class and not the back bay. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. There's a madman known as Mac who is planning to attack. If his mad attack means a Cadillac, okay. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. I've been asked to have a meal by a big tycoon in steel. If the meal includes a deal, accept I may. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. I could never curl my lips to a dazzling diamond clip. Though the clip meant, let her rip! I'd not say yay, but I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. Yes, I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. Here's an oil man known as Tex, who came to give me checks. But the checks to fear me, checks is here to stay. But I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. I'm always true to you, darling, in my way. This is Harrison Howell. Will you give me my secretary? Uh, Timothy, I'm uh, waiting here for Miss Vanessi, and I thought I'd just jot down my wedding itinerary. You ready? We'll be married at St. Thomas's, 2.30. You got that? Wedding reception at the Waldorf, 4.15. You got that? Press conference, 5.38. Arrive Grand Central, 6.25. Depart, 6.30. You got that? Arrive Washington, 9.35. Arrive White House, 9.55. Conference with President and honeymoon with wife. That's a good trick if you can do it. By the way, Harrison, may I call you Harrison? Call me Harrison if you wish. Harrison, may I give you a word of advice as an ex-husband on Lily? Uh, don't take her too seriously. You must understand the caprices of women of talent and beauty. Why, she may even say to you tonight, Harrison, I am playing this show under duress. Call the FBI. Why should she want the FBI? Why should she want an ambulance? 
Harrison, darling, they told me you were here. I'm playing this show under duress called the FBI. What did I tell you? Well, now, my dear, I, I don't mind bringing an ambulance and a doctor and two nurses. They're on my payroll, but the FBI is not. <laughs> now, I, I enjoy humoring the caprices of a beautiful woman whom I happen to adore. Caprices? Those thugs threatened me. What? They're making me play at the point of a gun. They won't let me leave the theater. Well, now, my dear... Can't you see? They're gangsters. I guess it shows. Uh, what can one say to libel? Should I say something? No. Discretion is the better part of valor. Famous sayings, top shelf on the non-fiction right-hand corner, Atlanta. No talking, no smoking. Well, obviously, my dear, judging by their costumes and their speech, these men are not what you say they are. Harrison, darling, hmm? listen to me. I can't get out of this theater. Well, why not? Those thugs won't let me. Why don't you try it? What? Go. Of course you can leave the theater. That's what you want, and I can't say that I blame you. After all, what is there in the theater to hold you? It's so tawdry. The dreary business of creating a part. The dull routine of watching a character come to life. The meaningless excitement of opening night. The idiotic men and women who stare and whisper, there goes Lily Vanessi. Dreadful. Dreadful. I don't blame you for leaving all that when you have a chance for happiness, real happiness, with Harrison. Oh, thank you, Graham. I think I can make the little woman happy. I never want to see the theater again. Or you are getting... I envy you, Harrison. Never has a man acquired a woman with so much sweetness of disposition, who is so even-tempered, has such poise, such sheer, unadulterated goodness. Yum, yum, yum. Yes, Lily Vanessi is the wife for you. Get Lily Vanessi today. This is NBC. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Enormously, and envying you. Me? Yes, the life you can lead from, with Harrison, so different from the one you had with me. What is that? No quarrels, no bickering. I want peace. And you shall have it. Peace, quiet, Stability. I've got a place down in Georgia. 30,000 acres. Ride for days and not see a soul. Uh, except my tenant farmers. What do you call the place? Solitude? No, contentment. Ah, contentment. Just think. No cocktail parties, no malicious gossip, no backbiting friends. In fact, no friends at all except for an occasional mongoose who'll drop in for dinner. Go on, go on. Oh, I've got a dining room. Can seat a hundred. Marvelous. Ah. For eight years, we ate in a dining room because see 1,200. Where did you say this was? The uh, commissary at MGM. Oh, I uh, got my own projection room. Uh, and the finest collection of Mickey Mouse's in the country. Hey, where's your grandma? It's Mickey Mice. Don't be a purist. Yes, I can just see your life with Harrison. Morning. He rises uh, with the aid of a valet. Been with me 30 years. Into his riding clothes, you into yours, a brisk canter. I'm mad about horses. And eventually you'll stop falling off. It's yoikes and away. Then back to the castle. A brisk shower, a massage, an injection of vitamin B1. Making a new man out of me? And then Harrison takes a nap. Oh, no. Breakfast first. Ah, yes, breakfast. You sit at one end of the long, long table, Harrison at the other. You pick up your telescope and watch fondly as Harrison slops his Wheaties. Ah, Wheaties are good eating. There's nothing finer. And then the nap. 20 minutes. Rest the brain. Then up. You dress, you contemplate the luxurious swamps, you toy with your toilet. Harrison wakes, you discuss this and that, topics of the day. Will headache escape Dick Tracy? I very much doubt it. Oh, time for another nap. Uh, uh, lunch first. Correction accepted, lunch first. Uh, got the finest chef in the country, but I have to watch my diet. Stick to uh, yolk of an egg, shredded raw carrot, and a glass of milk. Done wonders for me. And then a nice, soothing, refreshing nap. 30 minutes, rest the brain. You two will nap, Miss Vanessi. 30 minutes, rest the brain. Then up, dress, walk in the formal gardens. Time for tea, high tea. Always refreshes me. Time for another nap before dinner. 15 minutes. A quickie. Rested, you rise. You dress for dinner, you dine in that cozy little hundred-seater, and then a brisk game of dominoes. Oh, wonderful game. The mockingbird sings, the air is still. You feel drowsy, you yawn deliciously. Time for the final nap of the day, the long one. You stretch out, your eyes close. Get out! And so the little mama bear said to the papa bear, You bore me. <sighs> Hello? Oh, hello, Guppy. Let me talk to Mr. Hogan. Oh, I want to report in, Guppy. 
Mr. Hogan likes me to report in, Gumpy. Why should I call you Mr. Gumpy? Now, where's Mr. Hogan? Oh? Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Well, yes, sir, Mr. Gumpy. Gumpy. Hogan. Mr. Hogan's unidentified remains will be found floating in the bay tomorrow morning. Rest his soul. What do you think Mr. Gumpy has the executive ability, the initiative, enterprise, and imagination for the post? No, but he's got the post. Oh, Mr. Graham, I guess we're going to have to declare a moratorium. You see, Mr. Gumpy, he declared a moratorium on Mr. Hogan. So they'll let you out, and we must part. I want to say au revoir, Miss Vanessi. It has been a delightful experience. Very educational. We will always think of you. Should old acquaintance be forgot? What they're trying to tell you is you are free to go. You don't have to finish the show. Au revoir. Au revoir. Patty. Patty. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Get me a cab. And call the hotel. I want a ticket on the first plane to New York. Yes, ma'am. Aren't you taking Sleeping Beauty with you? Let him sleep. Don't tell me the bloom is off the rose. You're not Luella Parsons, and I don't care to discuss my personal life with you. Same old Lily. And I thought I detected a new note. A note of softness, a new humility. A spark of affection. Maybe even a glimmer of love. You're not going to hypnotize me, thank golly. Lily. Lily, you can't walk out on me now. You walked out on me once. But I came back. Your cab's waiting, Miss Vanessa. <laughs>
Hey, how do we get out of here? How do we get in here? Boy, it's a very confusing place here. Shelley and Keats and Poe. Dainty hippies will call you a dope. But the poet of them all, who will start them simply raven, is the poet people call the bard of a separate army. Rush up your Shakespeare. Start quoting him now. Rush up your Shakespeare. She'll think you're a hell of a fella. If you're blunt, don't respond when you flatter her. Tell her what code, don't leave or batter her. If she fights when her clothes, you are mustn't. What are clothes, but you do about nothing. Brush up your Shakespeare, and they'll all come. Shakespeare, and the women you will wow. If you can't be a ham and do Hamlet, they will not give a damn or a damlet. If a virtue at first she defends well, just remind her that all's well that ends well. And if still she won't give you a bonus, tell her what Venus got from Adonis. Rush up your Shakespeare, and they'll all bow. Think so, and they'll all count out. Odds, They'll all count We're cutting straight at the end. We'll get through somehow. What about New York? What difference does it make? What difference does anything make? Brother Vitutio, Daughter Catha, uh, uh, feast with the best and welcome to my house. Where is Catherine? Where is she? Uh, Sarah, go you to Mistress Catherine and say I command her come to me. I know she will not come. The fowler fortune mine and there an end. That cap of yours becomes you not. Off with that bauble, throw it underfoot. Oh, oh my. What a foolish duty call you this. Kate, I charge thee, tell these headstrong women what duty they do owe their lords and husbands.
there's a wench. Come on and kiss me, Kate. So kiss me, Kate. Oh. And twice and thrice. Carissimo. There we start living in paradise. Oh, kiss me, Kate. Next week at the regular time, see Behind Closed Doors, the Ford Show starring Ernie Ford and You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx. Now stay tuned for Masquerade Party in color over most of these NBC stations. This is Lee Vine speaking. This telecast was produced in association with the National Broadcasting Company Television Network and was brought to you from New York with the best wishes of the fine stores where you buy Hallmark cards. Visit there soon. They'd certainly appreciate knowing you enjoyed tonight's show. On the narrow winding streets of Venice, you'll come upon quaint shops like this, filled with a treasure refined by the centuries, world-famous Venetian glass. Today, Venetian master craftsmen still pursue a never-ending search for new designs, new colors, new shapes. It's this combination of craftsmanship and constant creativity that has made Venetian glass the best known in the world. And it's this same combination that makes Hallmark the symbol of distinction in gift wraps. This Christmas, Skilled Hallmark artists have created gift papers so beautiful, they'll be appreciated almost as much as the gift itself. For they're truly the added touch that means so much. Here, too, the artist seeks new techniques, like this bold decorator design of embossed gold and silver. New, too, from Hallmark is the use of warm watercolors to create the effects of a modern painting. And this Christmas, Hallmark also presents a gorgeous array of sparkle papers that glisten as they catch the light. To coordinate your gift wraps, choose several basic papers. Then, pick a variety of contrasting ribbons. A convenient way to select your paper is in handy Hallmark cutter boxes with sliding cutting edges that let you cut off just the amount of paper you need, neatly and with no creases. And just look at all the gifts you can wrap with just one cutter box. And see all the variety you achieve with contrasting ribbons and bows, tags and seals. For a final touch of elegance and style to your gifts, add beautiful Hallmark crown seals that actually stick to the paper without moistening. Just press on like this. So for the best dressed gifts this Christmas, gifts almost too pretty to open, choose coordinated papers and ribbons at the fine stores that feature Hallmark gift wraps. The added touch that means so much. We return to the second act of Kiss Me Kate on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. An American artist traveling in Japan last year came upon a charming little Japanese garden with its stunted pines and soft colors. And he was so impressed that he tried to recapture its delicate beauty with his watercolors. During the same time, in Italy, a skilled craftsman sought to recapture the soft colors and intricate details of the great religious paintings of old. While in his Connecticut studio, America's favorite illustrator chose everyday scenes for his artistic inspiration. And in this year's collection of Hallmark Christmas cards, you'll see the results of their creativity. 
for the three artists were among the creative people from all over America and the world who blended their talents to design this year's most exciting Christmas cards. These beautiful cards, created especially for Hallmark in Italy, treat the Christmas story with the soft colors and details of the old masters. While today's famed Norman Rockwell has created delightful new Christmas cards like this. You can select your Hallmark cards in boxes. This one features the delightful drawings of Saul Steinberg. Other Hallmark boxes of Christmas cards have matching envelopes to make your card stand out even before it's opened. In the new Hallmark albums, you can choose your Christmas cards to be imprinted with your name. You'll find magnificent cards like this one with its wise men who seem to have been sculptured in gold. The three-dimensional effect is achieved through an exclusive Hallmark process. In marked contrast are watercolor designs that have the delicate charm of a Japanese painting. Whichever Hallmark card you choose, you'll be proud of its craftsmanship and special beauty. And your friends will appreciate both the unique quality of your Christmas card and the added compliment on the back. The Hallmark and Crown, the symbol you look for when you care enough to send the very best. We return to Kiss Me Kate, coming to you with the compliments of the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards, immediately following station identification. See Perry Como and the Dean Martin Show, both in color, Saturday. <laughs> In a moment, we return to the third act of Kiss Me Kate on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Back in the 17th century, ribbons were such luxuries that the English Parliament restricted their use to the nobility only. And the royal ladies used the costly ribbon in graduated loops on their bodices, in their hair, their sleeves, even on their walking sticks. How they would marvel at the Hallmark ribbon of today with its infinite variety of colors and textures and at prices of only 25 cents to one dollar for giant spools. The star of this colorful line is famous Hallmark Hall Sheen Ribbon. This remarkable Hallmark Hall Sheen Ribbon sticks to itself when moistened, like this. So you can create every imaginable bow without tying any knots at all, like these beautiful poinsettia bows. As a wonderful new convenience, Hallmark Hall Sheen Ribbon now comes on handy new transparent crystal spools. So now you can see how much you're getting. These compact spools give you nearly four extra feet of ribbon. What's more, they let you cut off just the amount of ribbon you need without the rest unrolling. Other ribbon used from Hallmark this year are ribbons with a lovely marbleized effect. And beautiful ribbons that say Merry Christmas in glittering script in a rainbow of colors. And ribbons that glow with gold or silver sparkle. And if you like, you can get glamorous, ready-made Hallmark bows, all ready to crown your gifts with distinction. And here's a truly exciting offer. When you select one dollar's worth of Hallmark ribbon, you get as a gift the new book, Gifts Too Pretty to Open. It's just off the press and shows you so many original ways to wrap gifts for every occasion. How to create eye-catching bows and delightful party decorations like this Christmas table with its ribbon candle holders and its ribbon tree trimmed with ribbon roses. This helpful 24-page book is yours as a gift from the fine stores that feature Hallmark gift wraps. The added touch that means so much. In a moment, the names of tonight's cast and a surprise guest with a preview of the special Christmas program for the whole family coming December 14th on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Three people who pose a problem, an aunt, a brother-in-law, and a favorite neighbor. What to give them for Christmas? Well, this lady has the answers to so many of the question marks on your shopping list, for she's discovered gifts that are original and useful, yet so sensibly priced. One is the handsome Hallmark Thoughtfulness album, newly styled in soft green with pink and white flowers. Inside are calendar pages for each month, where you write down the occasions to remember that month, such as birthdays, weddings, and anniversaries. On each page, too, are pockets, where you file appropriate Hallmark cards for each of these occasions, 
and then have them on hand, all ready for mailing. And you can get a packet of 17 Hallmark cards for all occasions with the album, together a $5 value for just $3.75. And for all those who love to laugh, look, it's the Hallmark Contemporary Collection of Contemporary Cards for Contemporary People. Inside are pages with pockets to file humorous cards for all occasions. It comes with a packet of clever cards that are as much fun to send as to receive. Remember, too, the gift so many people will appreciate. Hallmark decorated notepapers, so smart looking, yet they're just 59 cents to $2 a box. New this year are lovely notes like these, with that added creativeness you expect from Hallmark. A real feather quill, lovely glittering sequins, or a three-dimensional rose that seems to grow on the notepaper. Like these formal engraved initial notes, every Hallmark note is just the right size for short newsy messages, thank yous, and invitations. You'll find, too, that Hallmark has some exciting new ideas in Christmas decorations for your home that also make most appropriate Christmas gifts. This holiday screen with glittering gold and silver ornaments makes a striking decoration on window, wall, or mantel. It all comes in an envelope for $1.75. These beautiful blue Christmas angels touched with gold and a new Hallmark nativity scene are other lovely Hallmark Christmas decorations for home or classroom. So remember, for original Christmas gifts and decorations, go to the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Good evening. I'm Cyril Richard, and I'm here to invite you to join me to help trim the Hallmark Christmas tree on Sunday, December the 14th. The Hallmark Christmas tree is the Christmas entertainment created especially for the Hallmark Hall of Fame by that wonderful Helen Deutsch, who has written a distinguished list of screenplays and some of television's most memorable hours. She has taken the baubles and glitter of the Christmas tree as her inspiration and fashioned them into our Christmas show. Joining me will be an all-star cast, including, in alphabetical order, Ralph Bellamy, Carol Channing, my skating partner, Morris Evans, Tom Poston, Jessica Tandy, and many others. We'll have comedy, drama, pantomime, ice skating, and I hope a show that you'll all have fun watching on December the 14th. And now, a bow to tonight's masterful cast.